Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the stream. I'm Priyanka. Um, I work in the digital media library here at um, NCSU Libraries. I also work here streaming stuff. So um, today I'm going to go back to crocheting. I don't know if you joined last time, but yeah, I was doing this thing called the um, mosaic stitch and whether you were there or not, I brought an example um, that I did at home with smaller yarn to show you guys uh, because let's see. Light. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but this yarn is kind of shiny, so it's but yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you can see the lines on that um, and how they blend together. But we're not going to be looking at that because it's horrible to look at with this overhead lighting. And um, I'm here today to talk about um, yeah, the libraries again. Like I mentioned this last time, and it sounds a little silly, but like. With so much technology in the libraries, I feel like we forget that there's actual books in here, <laughs> like non-textbook books, like cool books that you can check out. Um, and they don't have a lot of crochet books, but they do have a lot of fiber arts books. And I checked out this crochet stitches book um, uh, at Hunt while I was working there. Um, on the fourth floor, there's a bunch of textile design stuff. They have um, books on how to crochet, how to knit. They also have like history stuff, which is pretty cool. Like there's a lot of textile history. I guess because the college, like, you know, the, the College of Textiles or whatever. But that aside, I found this crochet book and I actually set my camera so that you can look at this with me. I was going to like flip through here and pick a stitch at random by doing a sample of so that you can see kind of the learning process. Um, and we can learn together <laughs> because it's difficult to pick these things up sometimes. So I'm hoping that by demoing this live for you, um, <laughs> it'll be a little less scary. So let's see. So the first the first chapter is like simple stitch patterns. So I think I'm going to pick something random here. It feels really fitting to do a brick pattern since we go to NC State. <laughs> so I'm going to see if that's like not terrible. So it's really nice because it shows you like a picture of what it looks like in real life. Um, and it does kind of look like bricks, but um, it shows you the picture. It shows you a little diagram, which is really nice. And then it also like writes it in crochet notes. Really nice. But it looks like there's brick and block. I feel like these are both equal. Yes, I'll do brick since I said the NC State thing, and I'll do it in NC State colors. So I'll put this away and grab some red. How this goes? Yeah. So last time I talked about like uh, crochet safety. Throw this away. Last time I talked about safety while crocheting. And um, I mentioned that I usually wear compression gloves while crocheting, so I actually brought them today. So I'm going to be wearing them on camera, even though they look like really lame, because uh, safety is important. So yeah, these just they keep my circulation going, and they help especially if like I um, have crappy circulation, but then I also tend to grab things really hard. It's a bad habit, but um, I tend to grab things really hard, so this helps me, I guess. Like it helps my hands not die. That's good. <laughs> so we have our yarn, and I'm gonna try to use one of my new hooks. I have a my backup like ergonomic one here in case that doesn't work out. But um, we're gonna try to do this stitch. I have my book off to the side. I'm gonna try and keep it out of view. So I don't have to look at it. Also, I closed this book like a dork because um, I was like, I'm done with this. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's not on camera. Cool. So there we go. Yeah, safety first. Wear your, wear your goggles. Make sure you're not going to explode anything in lab. Have proper ventilation if that's a thing. Which is why I'm not doing makerspace streams up here. Um, I wanted to do like wood shop and painting stuff, but there's no way to ventilate this room correctly. Um, and since the makerspace is open, I can't really stream inside there, so we'll see if I can let it out. But um, I don't know if you guys just saw. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't show you guys what I was doing, but I was just doing a little slip knot. Is a loop like that and then off center, and then you pull the yarn through it like this. Yeah, and it's called a slip knot because if you tug on it, as you saw before, it'll just magic. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put that back because I need it. Then we're gonna try and do this brick stitch because um, the learning experience, and we're in it together. Plus, it's pretty fun to watch people mess up like on stream or on video or whatever. There's an entire industry built off of it. So, <laughs> okay, so 
Um, this stitch says to chain a multiple of four stitches plus two. Um, a lot of crochets, like notation stuff, is written like this because um, sometimes when the pattern is repeating, you need like a certain number, and then the two is usually for like your border stitches or for height. I think in this case, looking at the um, picture, it's for height, but we'll see as we go along because I always discover stuff later. But since we're just doing a small sample, I'm just going to do like for my like, you know, divisible by four number because it's a small number. So, ooh, wow, three, four. Not going. Seven. And the other reason that I'm using these, the uh, this bamboo hook on camera, that's too painful off, but um, I'm trying to break in these new hooks. Um, I got a bunch of them and they're bamboo, which means that they're really nice and lightweight and quality, but you have to use them to wear down like the grain in here so that it's like nice and smooth. Uh, so you literally just have to crochet like a lot and, you know, obviously condition your hooks and stuff like the way you would have a nice cutting board. But yeah, you have to um, you just use them a lot. Anyway, we're up to eight stitches. Um, I'm gonna put two more because it said a multiple of four plus two. Then we're gonna count them to make sure I didn't use <laughs> an SSA. So, ugh, this is kind of small. But one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That seems wrong. <laughs> Oh wait, sorry, I counted this stitch that's like up here. You're not supposed to count that close to it, so it's one, two, three. Okay, we're good, we're good. False alarm, guys. Okay, so for one, you have to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. I'm gonna do that first. And by the way, all this notation's like really weird here. I'll show you. It's like all written in code. It's like all written in shorthand. It, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm still not very good at it, but I am trying on camera for you guys. So if we mess up, we mess up together. All right. Okay. So yeah, I have to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. That means I gotta skip this one, the second one right here. Probably cause we want it to be like that tall. Like I said, um, or usually like the, multi the plus two or plus three, whatever is um for height and that's what that first chain is see because it's taller now because it's got that chain yeah but i single crochet the second chain from the hook and then it says to keep going for chain okay oh no sorry it says to skip three chains see it says sk for a skip which is I don't understand why we're shortening a four letter word, but that's okay. So we're skipping three chains. So I went into, I went into this one. We're gonna skip one, two, three. We're going, gonna go into this one right here. I don't know what we're doing yet, but I'm gonna stick my hook in there so I don't lose my face. Okay, we're skipping chain ugh, three, and then you have to single crochet again. So we stuck our hook in. We're gonna yarn over, and we have two loops, then yarn over again, pull that through. So we have this weird Okay, not looking very brick like yet, but we'll um we'll suspend our disbelief. Yeah, skip is too much to say apparently. Um there's a lot of like abbreviations which I personally feel are a little much, but that's okay. okay. Single crochet in the next chain, repeat the end. Okay. So that means basically we have to count another three chains like we did last time. So one, two, Skip all those and then go in again in this last one. Then there we go. This is going to be our little brick pattern. Come to think of it, this is like two bricks wide, I think, is what that's supposed to be, and it's going to look a little wacky. So I think I'm going to start over and just chain more. You guys don't mind. <laughs> that's okay. I'll do it fast now that I'm not explaining everything I'm doing. That's one.
10, 11, and 12 is a multiple of four. I know math, and then two. Okay. Then I'm just going to real quick do what I just did, where it's like single crochet in the second chain. So it's one, two, then the three. I normally go like a little bit faster, but one, I'm way more careless on my own. <laughs> and two, um, not that I wasn't careless just now on camera, but and then two, I also um, will just let my technique fly out the window and I won't let, you know, like obviously I don't have to crochet in a way that you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's usually faster, but that's three skips. Then I go into this one. Yeah, I'm really glad to be doing red because, you know, it's eight. Kind of makes up for the fact that I'm not uh, wearing my library shirt today. I have no like red on my person. <laughs> okay, so then on to this one. One, two. So this time I guess we're gonna have three bricks. I'm not quite sure what the brick count will be. If I were really savvy at graphics, I would have like a brick counter on my on my screen. <laughs> but okay. One here, one, three. Yay, I counted correctly this time. Last time there was like an extra stitch and it was really bothering me. But we're doing it. Looks so whack, but um, hopefully with all crochet stuff, everything looks better if you give it like a second. Just caught a picture of myself in the, the person camera and I look like a big dork, but that's okay. Okay, so it says for row two, chain three. And it says in parentheses counts as a double crochet. So I don't know if you all remember, but um, a double crochet is basically like a single crochet, but like fatter, like it's more hefty. <laughs> um, a single crochet is like the most basic, like, you know, obviously it's a single crochet, like really, really small. It's like this, this chain, this thing right here, not on camera, this thing right here that I'm putting on your finger. Not that easy to, but, um, a single crochet is like a more robust crochet, basically, um, in that you have to put like, you have to do more steps. I'll probably get to show you here in a bit, but a lot of times when you're starting off your row of um, double crochets, they let you chain whatever the height of that double crochet is going to be, and that counts as like your first one. So, yeah, that's what that is. Um, luckily, this book is pretty clear. Okay, so chain three, it counts as a double crochet. Then three double crochets in each chain three space across. Okay, so those three spaces that we skipped, remember them? Uh, we're gonna chain three. Or no, wait, those are down here. Huh. Interesting. I guess we'll see how this goes, and if it's incorrect, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, so three double crochets in each. Oh, I understand. So all of my um double crochets are going not into the like chain themselves but into the spaces that I create so, like these three holes each get three double crochet but this first chain already counts for one so I'm only going to do two into this one as you're going to see it'll be a whole mess to start with but hopefully it'll start looking at brick like bricks and um Puffy won't come to kill me live on camera <laughs> am I allowed to say that am I going to get fired for telling everyone uh about Tuffy's like secret bloodlust, probably, but keep things real here at the library. Okay. So as you can see, well, you can sort of see. I'll separate them so you can see. There's one double crochet, there's two right there. <laughs> They're kind of hard to see because I can't really separate them out, but you get the picture. Looks like I'm supposed to do that in each space and not chain anything in between which means it's going to kind of just be a straight block it's going to be interesting i imagine it'll give it more structure much like the bricks at nc state there we go tying tying it all in unintended oh boy today's today's going real rough yes thank you this is what moderators are for you gotta you gotta hold toughy off while i finish Okay, so also by the way, all of this yarn that I use is like cheapo acrylic, like <laughs> plastic yarn. Um, and it's cause when I started first crocheting, I really wanted a lot of colors 
and I wanted a lot of flexibility, but I didn't have that much money. So, you know, if you want to try something new and you don't have like a huge budget to start it with, which like nice quality yarn is super expensive. So don't don't be afraid to get yourself started. I think I've mentioned them before, um, like on my last stream, but the Durham Scrap Exchange, if you're like doing something artsy, or even if you're trying to do a home project, like they they're amazing. Um get a lot of handy dandy things for way less money because I think it's that their emphasis is on sustainability. So if someone uses part of something or they bought something and they haven't been able to use it, like all of us in quarantine, um, it's sold like really, really cheap. Um, and it's really nice. Um, also, if you're a design student or like an art person or whatever, I'm like, if you're an art student here, like there's a lot of cool junk there. Like that would normally be considered trash. That would be like really cool for art. Like, um, they have like a bunch of those old orange pill containers and I was like if I glued those together to make like a sculpture or something that would be really cool. Unfortunately I don't have that much time and my house is cluttered because both the people that live in there have ADHD um, and I yeah I can't I can't be I can't just buy a whole barrel of pill containers. Thank you for linking the scrap exchange. Yeah they're in Durham so they're a ways away but um I'm part of a fiber arts group and we're hoping to organize a carpool or something. So, you know, get together with some friends, find someone who has a car, everyone has a car friend, and, you know, make a trip down. They have, like, power tools and stuff and, like, posters, too. So, like, anything that you're working on, there's something for everyone. Okay, this is non-sponsored, <laughs> if that wasn't obvious. But, okay, we're on row three now. This kind of looks brick adjacent. Like, bricks with nice trim. I don't know. Okay. Row three, I have to chain one. I do, okay. I just had a twisty moment here while I was rambling about the scrap exchange, how much I love them, but chain one, and then you have to single crochet into the first double crochet. Okay. Um, hold on. See, does the first double crochet mean this one that I've started out in, or like this one that's technically the second one? I'm gonna assume that they mean this one, and We'll go from there and we'll see where that gets me. But I have to single crochet in the first double crochet. That's the other thing. You can't be afraid to mess up. Like, I am about to mess up very many times. I've already done it once. That's okay. Because that's the best part about doing, like, a physical hobby. Like, um, you can mess up all the time and you can just redo it. And especially if it's, like, for no one like, but yourself, you can mess up all the time, and it's great. It's wonderful. Everyone should have something like that. Like, I know in the current society that we're in, there's this emphasis on being really good at things and um, trying to perfect things or, like, trying to monetize your hobbies. Um, and I know I could get an Etsy shop, but, you know, like, this is, this is really nice that I can just screw up at yarn, um, and it'll be fine. Like, this is my own personal thing. I don't need to be. Um, I had to chain, I had to chain three on this, and then I have to skip three double crochets, I guess the, I, I, I'm gonna read this whole instruction to make sure that I've gone into the right one, because now I'm concerned. So it says to single crochet into the first double crochet, chain three, and then skip three double crochets, so that's like four up. In the previous. Okay, so they've, by the way, they've abbrevi abbreviated between as BTW, so I read it as by the way. Not, not good, but, <laughs> okay. Between the previous and next double crochet, so, you know what, I'm just going to do this, and if the count is off, then I'll know at the end, because I'll have extra stuff left, or I'll overshoot. We're going to move forward. I need to be less... Yeah, I just lectured you guys about being bad at things, and how that's empowering, and then now I'm trying to plot this out. That's not good. Okay. So, um, we have to sing... Blech. We have to skip... Skip three double crochets. Thing one, two... And then... I think I understand what's happening here. I'll show you the book, because it'll make more sense to you, but... It seems like they're staggering the bricks, right? So if one brick is here, then the next brick is, like, here. Like, they're they're off from each other like this. So I think what they're trying to do is establish that so that you can 
like zigzag your way up. Um, so hopefully that'll go well for me. But that means I probably shouldn't have gone into that first one because that would be really weird. Let's let's start. <laughs> the difficult part is that um now I'm doing this for work, which I'm really grateful to do my hobbies for work, but this is something that I'm specifically bad at because I like, you know, I let myself do it. I let myself be bad at it. And now it's becoming not a problem, but I'm getting a little self-conscious just because I'm on camera, which means that like somewhere someone's witnessed this and there's like a recording of it probably. But I just need to. Oh, okay. Single crochet into the first double crochet. They have to mean this. I'm going to assume they mean this one. And if you think otherwise, then tell me and I may <laughs> listen. Tell me in chat and I may listen. I'm open to suggestions here. Um. Okay. I did that first one. And then I'm chaining three. And then I have to do some double crochet, which I will read later. Uh, okay, yeah. So. Yep, three double crochets. So I'm skipping one, two, and then into this one. This one's going to get got. Oh, yeah. Single crochet between the previous and the next double crochet. That's so confusingly worded, but I assume that after I've skipped these three, I have to go in the space like right here. Right, right in there. So that's what I'm going to do. And if it's wrong, I will contact the authors and I'll ask them for my money back, which I didn't pay any money for this book because libraries are free, which is awesome. Come get books here, but also. If I can harass some crochet authors, that's, you know, that'll always be fun. Okay. Okay, so I did my single crochet. I have to chain three again. Okay, so we're creating those loopies again that um I did first when I was establishing. Like, when I was establishing this, I'm going to cre be creating these loopies. That kind of makes sense to me, which is the nice part about crochet. Like, even if you mess up and you redo it, it starts to make sense because everything builds on everything. So you're repeating a lot of different things, even if they're constructed differently. So at least I feel like I'm making sense of this. Um, uh, chain three, skip three, double crochet. Okay, so like repeat the same thing basically. Skip these three and then get in here. And you have to repeat. You have to repeat. To... Okay, so my only problem with this is that this is not even. I think I understand that it's like supposed to be mirroring this, which means that I did this incorrectly. This single crochet should be here. And like this is this is lopsided. This is one over. So, but we learn from from our mistake. Okay, so this is cool. Yeah, because we're saying one, two, three, then we go in here. We can do this together. <laughs> Power of friendship and internet and the library. Oh, also, fun fact. Um, my lovely boss, Claire, helped me set up this time because last time, I don't know if you guys remember, but I was like a little late to stream. There were some technical issues, so she came to make sure that I... <laughs> wouldn't be confronted with the same technical issues and we managed to set up my um help set up my person cam like my webcam right here oh hey claire <laughs> speak speak of the not the devil the angel yeah <laughs> but she helped set up this camera so that like i have a green screen essentially so you don't have to see whatever's back there um and it's making my hair look blue which is funny because it's greenish um but i guess because the filter but to answer your question, Claire, I'm making, I looked up a stitch pattern, and it's the brick pattern, because to honor NCSU, because we, we're all about bricks here. We love bricks. Um, yeah, so, and I'm doing it in an NC State red yarn, and we'll see how this goes. Um, 
yeah, I think I've reached the end of this, and it says at the end, you go, like, a, a single crochet right into the top of this, which makes sense, because that's how we started. Like, we made this unsightly lump. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing that. I can get my hook, little hook in there. This is where it gets tricky if you're, like, a really tight. We're going to just make sure this chain is as tall as the other single crochet, so we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to go into that loopy. Where it's going to be a little difficult for you guys to see. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Oh, there we go. Aha. Nice. Yeah, but um, hopefully we'll get the opportunity to explore some other stitches. after. I'm going to stop after this starts looking like a thing. Like, once we realize, oh, wait, that looks like bricks, sort of. You guys see that, right? There's like three bricks. It's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. Okay. And then, so the directions after that say repeat rows two and three to desire length. So we're just going to repeat. And again, that's what I love about crocheting is like after you've figured out the initial thing and gotten all confused, um, you can, you can figure it out. Like you can just keep going. You can just keep repeating and you'll know already. But like, you know, after you read this book and you figure out what exactly you're supposed to be doing, you can sit back, relax, um, watch The Queen's Gambit on Netflix or whatever, whatever is your jam. <laughs> or in my case, you can talk to a bunch of people on the internet and <laughs> they'll be forced to listen to you. And then, just to do that. Yeah. So, we have three chains. Also, speaking of bricks, do you guys remember, okay, so you know how everyone, like, will steal bricks, like, right out of the ground, right? Like, around here, like, if there's a crack in the ground, like, because we're grimy little students, we'll, like, put our little fingers in there and try to get the bricks out, because, I don't know. I think, I think it's, like, the exams and stuff that make everyone nuts sometimes, but, um, but I don't know if you guys remember this. I've been to that at the school for like a really long time, but they made this like character to prevent people from stealing bricks. And it was like this raccoon. Like they made another like animal person for us. I I feel like the raccoon's name was Bandit or something, but the point was that like, you know, since a raccoon has a little mask, it's like a little robber. Yeah, stealing bricks is a thing. We're awful. I'm convinced that every school that has bricks, like a lot of bricks, has like people stealing bricks. It's not on the wall or anything, so it's not that bad. I mean, it's still bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> but people are stealing bricks. Um, due to contempt, maybe, probably, or maybe insanity. But anyway, um, yeah, so they made this like raccoon person. So now we have Tuffy, the, the female Tuffy, whose name I don't know. And the raccoon person, very briefly, there was like a sign outside Tally that was like, hey, don't steal bricks. Here's free bricks, um, courtesy of our bandit raccoon person. And there was just a pile of like fresh bricks on the ground, like outside Tally next to the sign. I, it's really funny that the administration, like I want to be a part of that meeting where they were sitting in their meeting room and they were like, how do we get these monstrous little kids to stop stealing bricks out of the ground? And they, their solution was just to like leave a free pile of bricks for everyone. It didn't work because like the bricks, the brick stealing isn't about the bricks. It's about the stealing, obviously. But um, you know they tried, and I can't really fault them for that. I feel really bad for them actually. Like that's such a crazy thing to have to um prevent. Okay, but we did our row two again. So like I put three double crochets in all these gaps, and then I'm gonna chain. Yeah, there's the there's the article. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, um our school is real <laughs> our school sure is something. <laughs> yeah. I just I think about that all the time. I also um so I have a lot of like friends like that aren't from where I'm from. It's like they're not from NC or they're yeah, not from this country or whatever. And I talk to them a lot about the stuff that happens at the school, particularly the like wolf branding, because we have some like heavy wolf branding. They almost never believe me. I'm like, yeah, we have this every year running event called the Howl and Run. It's at night and you run into run to this place and you eat like donuts really fast and most people puke and they're like, What are you talking about, Priyanka? No, that no one's doing that. I'm like, yeah, and we have a late night bus called the Werewolf. They're like, you're making this up. Like, surely America's not this nuts. Yeah, okay. So I <laughs> I feel like this raccoon, um, 
sky was like a fever dream or something, but I definitely have a picture of it on my like Snapchat memories somewhere. <laughs> um, so I can probably find it, but yeah, it does sound crazy, doesn't it? So, uh... yeah, I chained three and then get three double crochets on the crochet into that gap again. So I think I'm gonna stop maybe after after my next row of bricks because you can tell that this is now. Um and that was the point of this, and we'll try a new stitch. And we'll have a bunch of little cool samples of all these. Yeah. It'd be really cool to make like um a, a crocheting library. I'm sure that exists somewhere where they've like um oh, where they've preserved preserved like textiles or different types of like to look at them. I've only ever seen pictures in books, but I'm sure like in there's a library or a museum. I should actually ask the College of Textiles for that because that'd be really cool um, to show off. Okay. And then I have to go into that space again. I'm not really even looking at the directions anymore except for like reference. That's a beautiful thing. And Throw yourself at this and do a terrible job like once and then you can like immediately learn <laughs> and then not have to ever look at directions again, which I hate reading directions. So <laughs> it's a really good hobby for me. And I go into the stitch. I left purposefully loose because I learned from my last time. So I don't have to try really hard to get in here. Okay. Oh, there's a Friday stream about the textile stuff. Okay, cool. Well, I'm personally going to tune into that, and I think everyone should, because, I don't know, I... This is going to sound very silly, but I feel like I constantly forget that, like, everything is history. Like, there's a history... There's a study of history for literally everything, right? Like, every topic ever. Um, yeah. And I guess cloth and textiles and stuff is one of those things that I take for granted. Cool. Yeah, that's a, that seems like a super, super cool stream. I hope everyone's able to catch it. Yeah, I'm going to do this last row of, it's, it's the thing again where I have to three double crochets in every space, and then I'm going to bring the book back on camera, and we can choose a new stitch. And if you guys have any, if you guys have any suggestions, those would be appreciated. Okay, so... There's three. But yeah, I was talking about what a double crochet was, and then I never, like, actually showed you guys. I mean, I did it on last stream, but I can't assume that everybody's watched everything. But basically, here, I'll show you the difference. With a single crochet, you stick your hook in to whatever you're single. Yarn over, pull that through. So you have two loops, and then you yarn over, pull that all the way through, and you, you're done, right? That was pretty. That's a single crochet. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a double crochet, and this is a single crochet, and this one's, like, way, way wimpier. This one has, like, more, more wrapped around it. It's, it's sturdier. But, um, I'm gonna undo that, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm supposed to really be doing. So, you stick your hook in, same, or, sorry, no, not same as old. You yarn over in advance, so you already have two loops. Thumbs your, stick your hook in, yarn over, pull through, so you have three loops. Yarn over, pull through, so you have two loops, and then finally yarn over, and you have nothing. So it's this like big fat, <laughs> super sturdy stitch. Um, double crochet is good for like a lot, but I'm gonna try and hopefully um show a stitch um that has specific properties. Um, because these are the simple ones, so all the descriptions are like, this is really cool and it's uncomplicated, but there are specific stitches suited to specific purposes. Like, oh, this one's like really stretchy or, you know, whatever. Hopefully I'll be showing you. Yeah, but I'm really, I'm now I'm thinking about that stream on Friday. Like, I'm really curious to see what types of textiles I'll have on hand. I bet, you know, because special collections, they always have some cool stuff. I bet they have some cool stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna this last one and then call it quits because we made some bricks. Didn't even have to steal them. Around. Okay. I don't know why this row started out this way and this is still like this, but 
That's a mystery for not today. <laughs> I'm gonna try and find my little scissors so I can cut this. Oh, we're buried at the bottom of my. I have a yarn box off camera, um, but we're gonna snip. Yeah, again, the great thing about crocheting is that you don't have to tie any knots. You can just, yeah, I have the sleeve on my hook. You can just pull this bad boy through and then tighten it. That's a knot! Yay! So we did, we did one thing of a uh, brick, brick stitch. Brick pattern, whatever that's called. We did bricks. We did bricks and yarn. There you go. That's bricks. It literally does look like bricks. Huh. Okay. We're gonna set that aside. Um, get that off camera. Okay. And I'm gonna bring this book back on camera, and we can get other ones. Hopefully, at the end of um this stream, I kind of want to line all of mine up <laughs> at the end to see what we all did together. But. Oh, cool. There's a picture of the author. <laughs> All right. I know who to address my complaints to if I have any. Um, but it looks like th they have it categorized in terms of like easiness, which is really nice. Personally, we're going to skip past the simple stuff because we're way more advanced than that. Now we've learned. Um, looks like... Okay, we're not going to do any color. See, there's a bunch of mosaic ones. The thing that I was showing you last time. Maybe we'll do one of those because there's a bunch of different variants on it. Um, which it's like technically complicated, but I've, I've done it before, so I feel confident in being able to do this. Um, except these all take a lot of colors and I don't want to bore you guys with setup. This one's insane. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to, I legally have to do this one because it looks so crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I should sew them all together. I'm actually considering, um, you know those like little circular clips, those little circular clips that you use for like flashcards? I was gonna just try and chain them, all my little samples together, because I end up making a lot, like by default. Because <laughs> you know, when you're trying to explore, explore different styles, um, you end up with a lot of them. To the side. This is too complicated, I'll just abandon it. But it says that we have to do multiples of eight, so it that didn't be too bad. I have a green angled. I have a green here, so I guess we're gonna start off with that, and then I'll probably use pink here as well. Today I only brought three balls of yarn because last time I brought way too much yarn. So here we go. Yeah, but um, th so what I mentioned earlier, like doing little sample stitches, is actually a technique. And, um, for yarn people, like not just crocheting. I'm not just saying that to sound goofy, but getting what it's called. But I think it's called like a weave or something. Like it's it's basically like a little sample. It's like the equivalent of a little Costco sample before you purchase like a family sized pack of chicken burgers or whatever they sell there. But um, it's basically to check how tight the weave is, so that um, like you know how long it stretches and you. You know how many stitches correspond to how many inches. So if you're making something complicated like a sweater, you'll know exactly what you're getting into, right? Um, it's and it's usually used for like really, um, really closely sized things like clothing or like if you're making a laptop case, something like that. You don't usually do it for like a scarf unless you want it to be really. Small. But yeah, if you're like a diligent, like a good crochet person, uh, you do like a little tiny block sample of it and then you measure it and you know, you get your information. That way you can like, you can do the math if you really want and like convert like stitches to inches. We have four here. Nine. How long should I make this? Um, seven. I think it was good to have um, three rounds last time, so I think that's the rule I'm going to be going by. 14. One. Twenty-four. Okay, and then so they wanted it in multiples of eight, and then plus something probably plus one. Five. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure to count this so that I don't mess up. Which 
it seems like counting is an annoying step and it takes long, but it's better than having to go back and unravel what you've done, in my experience. Which I'll do that anyway when I'm on my own because I don't care, but... Um... Oh, bye, Claire. It was nice to have you. All right. We're going to count some stuff. One, two, three, four, five, seven. We're good. Um, I'm a little tempted to use my stitch markers for this, honestly. I think I did bring them. And it would be really cool to show you guys them because stitch markers are really useful um, when you're a person that can't count. Like, but okay, yeah, I did find them. So I think I mentioned these last time. I'll show them on the document camera, but it's just this little plastic pouch and that's too shiny. I need to get some out anyway to use, but basically they're these little like plastic rings and you put them into your, you put them into your yarn so that you can count like how many stitches and stuff. So if I was doing especially like a blanket or a scarf or something long where there's like a lot of stitches, um, you would use these to count where you are. So I think I'm gonna put one in every, it says it's a multiple of eight. So I'm gonna put one in every eight so that I can tell um, where I am so I don't mess up that much. It'll be pretty annoying if I do. This plus one, a little worried. I'll put these in after I do my first establishing. A single crochet in the second chain from the hook last time. And again, that's for height. So um, we're going to skip that one, go into this. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, and each chain across, change color, turn. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this and just single crochet in each of these. Um, which is pretty boring, so I don't need to narrate it. But yeah, and then after that, I'm going to count them to make sure that my count is correct. I should have 24 because I skipped that one. So 25 minus 1 is 24. And um, yeah, I'll, I think I'll mark mark every 8 so that I can tell because that it looks like that's what our rounds are going to be in. So I can keep that. That'll be yeah, this pattern looks crazy and one of the best parts about crocheting is that like you're following along the directions but at the same time your mind is like running because you're like running the calculation right you're like how does this little thing become this crazy you know like crisscross like what i'm doing right now does not look like it's going to become those crazy crisscross pattern but apparently it is i'm also not sure why it's called like cameroon because it seems to me that if it were from cameroon like it, I don't know. It's <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would have just the name Cameroon if it was from Cameroon. So like I'm wondering what how that happened. But yeah, but I'm really glad that I was able to bring some more of my um. And I'm not not a very fancy crocheter or anything. But there are a lot of little things that you should really get that'll make your life better. Um, I was really foolish starting out, and I was like. You know, I got caught up in like my hubris and I was like, I can count, it's okay, I can't. Um, also it's really hard to count. Like if because it's such a boring activity and if you have to do like a lot of counting, it's just difficult. I was being really stubborn and I refused to buy these for like a really long time. Um and I was all like losing either losing count and messing up, and I got to the point where I was like tying yarn on like to keep count of the stitches and it was so stupid. It's like you're doing the same thing that you could do if you just spent $3 <laughs> and bought like little plastic loops. And like it felt dumb to buy little plastic loops, but it's way worse than tying on yarn like a crazy person. <laughs> so, you know, moral of the story, accept help, even if it's from little bits of plastic. It'll, you know, <laughs> better than restarting things constantly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but another thing that you learn once you get better at crocheting is, first of all, like, you learn how to go faster and you learn how to hold your thing properly. But also, like, the the tension with which you things is important, so you can't do it too tight or too loose. Do it too tight. It's difficult to get your hook in and do what you do. But if it's too loose, like, obviously, oh, it's going to be all, like, it'll be all shapeless and all fall apart. Um, 
So I've been really trying to work on like keeping my texture or my tension even. It's normally fine um, if you're doing like one single color across something because it all evens out because it's one long piece of string essentially, right? But I'm about to switch colors as you'll see. And um, you know, when you're tying it off and then over to a different color, it's like the, the tension will be shared across the two colors probably. So best to just know figure out how to do that well <laughs> almost there by the way go on for much all right so got our thing it's a little twisty but we got it stop twisting okay it won't but that's okay <laughs> um the other thing i like is that um these are in different colors they're in different colors wow you can't see that but i have white pink and blue. I don't know why it's like baby gender colors, but we're gonna put that. I like to think it's trans flag colors, personally. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna use like, I guess I can use the same color for this, but sometimes if it's like I want markers at 5 and 10, I'll like swap colors so that I can tell exactly like what multiple. Okay, so one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one. One, two, five, six, five. I'm like all messing up this cloth. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Okay. Then one, five, seven, eight. Okay, yeah. So our count is correct. I just needed two because, you know, this ends. Going to mark it. Uh, but yeah, we have to the end. And so it says to change color and turn. So there is a lot of different ways to change colors. I'm going to utilize the method that I used last time when I was doing mosaic stitch. So that's basically like cut, like cut this, tie it off, and then come in with a different color and you sew in the ends later. Except I'm not going to sew in any ends at all today because these are samples and demonstrations. Sewing ends in is easily the most boring thing about crochet. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna go in with pink. I only brought three colors of this big yarn. Um, and I don't wanna go in with red because Christmas, but. Okay, we found the end. All right. Oh, there's a cute tree. Okay, I've never seen that emote. I'm not really used to Twitch emotes, so I don't know if that's like a standard one or like a the library's added it one. But either way, it's cute. Also, I don't understand why the default smiley face is that like little mask guy. It reminds me of the, um, the mask guy from the game Off. I don't know if anyone remembers that game. It was relevant in like, I want to say 2013. It's been a while. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm going to start out with this. I'm just going to make a slip knot, which I explained earlier. So Look in there. Fit in this. Then I'm just going to slip stitch this in my, my guy. I'm kind of tempted to go up here so that I don't have to mess with my uh, stitch markers. I, I actually might do that because <laughs> I don't, it would be nice to not have to move them. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to crochet up here, but I'm going to slip stitch into this first one so it's in there. So that just means like you stick your hook in, yarn over, and then you pull all the way through. And it's like, you know, it's just to get it on there. Basically. It not actually count as a This will be better once I have more length, which is what I always say because it's true. <laughs> okay, so it says to go to in one and do that. We'll crochet in the first single crochet. That's a tongue twister sort of. So we're gonna go back into this little hole right here where I currently am. <laughs> I always get weirded out when they tell me to like go back in and they like I haven't really done it at all and I'm like 
Okay. So, and then you chain one, skip one single crochet, and then you crochet in the next two. So we're going to skip. So we're going to skip this one. We're going to go into this. Yes, I would like to see your favorite Twitch emote. I don't know anything about them, so I'm going here blind. In here blind. Ugh. Mine must be taught the ways of Twitch. Looks so horrible. I think Crochet is the ultimate like epitome of like have faith, just follow the directions, and it'll probably turn out okay. <laughs> don't worry about it, because if you try to worry about it, you'll ruin it. Oh my god, it's a frog. Or is that a lizard? It's it's a, a frog. Whatever. It's adorable. Um, I today I saw one of those bumper stickers that says like MILF, but it stands for man I love frogs, and it was truly a blessing. Like I feel like I made my morning. <laughs> what a good tone for the day. What a good frog. You really don't need any context to use that emote at all. <laughs> okay. We will crochet in the next two. Chain one, skip one. Okay, so it feels like we're establishing a pattern here. We're chain one, skip one, we will crochet. Then you crochet in the next one. Then you chain one, and then the next two. One, two. Let me read that again. Oh, never mind. Okay, so I shouldn't assume things. Okay, chain one, skip one, single crochet, single crochet in the next four. We're mixing it up. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna chain. So paranoid that I'm gonna. Okay, I will reread this again. Chain one, skip one. Single crochet in the next two. Chain one, skip one single crochet. Okay, so this is the next four. So I've already done one of the next four. I have to do. <laughs> The bad part about cheap yarn, though, is that, like, sometimes it will, like, come apart. Like, I'll start to crochet, like, in the middle of the week. I have to realize that I'm, like, that's not a full piece of yarn. Like, like this. Like this. Splitting right here. That's not good. <laughs> um, we're going to not do that, and it'll be okay. <laughs> so, I think we've done... Yeah, we skip. Okay. You can actually see where I've skipped things, so that's handy. But we've done this one, we've skipped one, and then two, and then we've skipped one. Now we've done three, so I just need to do one more. Then we can look at the next direction. Bad, but we'll turn into a cool crisscross thing. So. <laughs> I'm looking for that. Okay, and then you repeat. Yes. Oh, they, what's interesting is they put a little asterisk, ugh, an asterisk in the text, like from, like marking the point from which they want you to repeat things, um, which is pretty cool because it's, it's like, I don't, it's like a coda basically where it's like return to this part. It's neat. Okay. And I was about to like start um start being irritable because I was like, I need to start from, but no, they marked it for me. I'll have to look at okay, so I have to skip skip one single crochet and then go into the next two. I did last time. Skipping this one. Then I'm gonna go into this one. Also, you might think that I have to go under these two loops, but you have to turn it like turn ways like this and then be like, oh, top two loops that I'm supposed to be going through. I've stuck my hook through a lot of the wrong loops like a lot of times. <laughs> and you think it's fine at first, but then you look down at it when you've like gotten gotten a little further and you're like, this looks all lumpy, all twisty, like topsy. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing we have to do the chain one and yeah, chain one and skip one and then the next four. Oh, crush. Yep, and 
got a one. This one. Very good. I'm trying to think what these colors remind me of, but I can't come up with like a combination other than like um like a really basic like coloring book flower. Like uh, the way an elementary school color it's like pink and green. It is cute, I suppose. Like it's a good <laughs> color company. It's a bit day glow, but um luckily this isn't like an actual project. No one's just between you and That piece of yarn felt extra thick for some reason. <sighs> My yarn split. My fourth one. And I think I have to repeat it one more time, which it makes sense because we did three rounds, if you recall. We did 24 stitches. That was three. So then we have to repeat what we did again. So chain one, skip one, crochet to the next two. After, after the skip, crochet the next. Okay. Two. Okay, and then you have to skip one and skip one again. Another routine. Oh no, see, okay. You can see the mistake that I did. Well, you can't see it that well. Let me try and, oh, I still don't know if you can see how, wait, let's focus. Will this focus? It won't focus, but you can still see that little string in there that is not supposed to be, because I split the yarn. <laughs> I'm gonna redo that one stitch. Um, I also really like patterns that change a little because then um, it's harder to lose track of what you're doing. Because, like, you know, there's a repetition of like um, with like two single crochets in a row and four single crochets in a row. So, if I literally, if I lose track, I can literally be like, okay, well, I'm doing the four single crochets right now and I've skipped this one. So, that means I have one, two. So, you know, like, no harm done. I can just glance at it and figure out and backtrack right where I am. I always find helpful. <laughs> I do a better job like staying on camera, not my face, like having my cans be on camera for this because last time I was like all wandering all over the place. But I want you guys to be able to see exactly what's happening. I'm getting towards the end. It says across to the last two single crochets, crochet into the last two in turn. I think that's where we've reached. Or one in this from the top you can really tell. I've done these two, so it's this one and this one, which it's like a little hard to tell, but you have to really find. But um I'm gonna do this one. And you have to remember like the loops at the side, like that's that's the height, like that's the side of it. That's not that's not another single crochet. So I can't go into that. And I've made that mistake plenty of times before. Like you, you're saying, hey, Priyanka, that's really dumb. Like, how dumb do you think I am? And the answer is, I, I'm not telling you because I think you're dumb. I think that I'm dumb and that I've done it before. So I'm warning you just in case. <laughs> okay, so we've gotten our second row. And it says to turn again. Oh, so it's way but it doesn't seem to switch the color which is curious so i guess i'm gonna just stay in this color i have to chain three again it says this counts as a double crochet so this first chain is going to be her first double crochet this one's taking forever i'm impatient it does look long and complicated i just wanted to start looking like something before i quit okay and double crochet and each single crochet and chain across. Wait. Oh, and each single crochet and chain across. Okay. <laughs> I run that wrong. But basically, we're going to try and end up with like 24 again because I have to do it like in a row so it looks even. Okay. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to try to ensure that my count is correct. So 
This should be my first one. So we're not going into this one. We're going to go directly into this one. What I said was correct. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like because I'm so prone to like uh, talking so much and explaining as I go along, I should work with kids. But then I remember that my directions half the time are literally so confusing and like scattered <laughs> that like I would be I mean, I'm a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. But if I had to be in a position where it was like. It was something really intricate and important, I think I would do poorly. Then again, I taught like swim and water safety to like children of all ages for like a several months and they didn't die and I had like some of so for like the youngest age group kids like ages like I think six months to three I had like four people to my lane so I was like single-handedly having to watch and like were small very drownable children <laughs> so maybe I should give myself a little more credit <laughs> um I'm probably not going to go forward and do that, but it's really fun talking to children. Um, I used to volunteer for the Museum of Sciences, and they had this pro volunteer program called the CART program, and basically have a CART, like, on a topic, and you would go in the museum, and you, you know, try and talk to people that pass by, usually, and then, like, you know, get them excited about whatever topic you were doing. Um, I had this dinosaur one, and it was really fun, and I even got, like, a really tacky button-up, like, if Miss Frizzle wore like a shirt instead of dresses, like dinosaur shirt, it's really cool. Um, but I haven't gotten to wear it since because I have no reason. <laughs> but hopefully I can get back to it at some point. A little iffy because COVID. Do you like how I'm able to and not like be near anyone or anyone's germs? So we'll see about that. Yeah, we're just double crocheting along. Um, when I get to the stitch marker, I'll count to make sure that there are eight. Because, you know, that's what the stitch markers are for, to make sure I'm not getting off track. While I am labbing. I think I've had a weird amount of jobs, like, doing things with children. I really think about it. Yeah, so you can see the stitch marker on this side. Cool. so I have one more stitch to go. Well, actually, that's that's the first one. So I should already have eight already. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're on target, guys. Doing good. We're feeling fine. I'm actually going to take water before I continue. <laughs> well, my bottle looks like so bright under these lights. Funny that you say crocheting takes a lot of concentration, um, because I'm, I'm both very good and very terrible with concentration, so if I get too locked on into a project, like, I'll forget that, like, I have a human body with needs, <laughs> and I'll, you know, like, I'll sit there for hours on end, like, focused in on this, and forget to drink water, or, like, forget to eat food, or forget to, like, go up, get up to pee, so, um, <laughs> it's good and bad, but... I mean, as long as you do stuff, like, I, I literally have alarms set to remind myself that time has passed. It sounds silly, but, like, you know, everyone's been there where they forget to go to bed, and you look at the clock, and you're like, it is 3 a.m., um, I and I have a 6 a.m. I did not think this through. <laughs> but, yeah, I have, like, an alarm for, like, 10.30 p.m., and the entire point of the alarm is to inform me that it's 10.30. <laughs> um, highly useful, would recommend, if you have trouble keeping time. Sorry, I'm trying to get my hook like into this one pesky stitch. I'm gonna take myself out of view. Second. There we go. Okay, I've entered. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Where I've crocheted too tight, but it's most yeah, and the other thing is that if you forget that time is passing when you're crocheting, you have the tendency to hold down hard like me. You stop and you're like, why do my hands hurt so much? And it's like, because you've been crocheting for like hours and hours and you've been squeezing these like hooks and like haven't stopped. <sighs> 
I think that when I crochet the most and it's like bad, um, it's usually because I'm under like exam stress. Like I get hardcore <laughs> test anxiety, and this is like a really nice coping skill. But at the same time, you have to like make sure you don't overdo it with like any, you know, like too much of anything is bad probably. So, you know, moderation. Really, these like chain one spaces are like really get into. <laughs> Also, I don't think I wore my glasses last time. Um, didn't do a lot of, like, or I didn't wear a lot of things last time. Like, I didn't have my compression gloves and I didn't have my glasses. Because um, I wasn't sure with the mask and stuff. But this time I'm all, all decked out in my gloves and my glasses. Fully torched. But you, you get to see my, like, glasses slipping down my nose as I try to figure out, like, how to enter the stitch. Uh... Oh my god, I can't even tell for that emote, like, whose, um, whose face that is. Oh. Did my- oh no! <laughs> okay, so, uh, here we have a classic problem, and it's that my stitch marker fell out, so now my stitches are not marked. So I'm gonna backwards count and see. One, two, four, five, six. It'll be- I'm gonna loop it through like both <laughs> both stitches this time so that it's not like gonna normally I just do it through one because I do it on like the topmost stitch because like so I can take it out when I you know crochet over that part but in this case it's not particularly helpful because I put them on the bottom specifically so I wouldn't have to mess with them so it would be good if those pull out. And then I was also going to count because I've reached the point, um, I've reached eight stitches now. Yay, see, that looks so beautiful and even. It doesn't look like the pattern yet, but it looks, like, you know, nice. Except that stitch looks vicious. Do you see? That looks like a single crochet to me, or, like, like it's too tight or something. I'm going to redo that one. That's definitely a single crochet. See, it was, like, it was too wimpy looking, and I knew in my heart that it wasn't right. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're gonna count. We're gonna admire my work. <laughs> okay. So this one, one should be the first. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. Yay, we're doing it. Okay, let's let's continue. We have eight more to go. I really need to speed up with this because, like, yeah, I'm getting in. Just want to see the cool crisscrosses. I cannot imagine, let's see what it says, like, because they have suggestions for what each for. I want to know what they recommend making out of this, because it's so complicated. I can't imagine doing a really big project. It says the pattern crosses itself to create a three-dimensional lattice look for kids' toys. So they can cuddle it and hold it by the crosses. Oh, so it, like, has little built-in handles. That's pretty cool. Um, guess I could give this to a child. It's not really a toy, so I don't think they'd care, but I could, I could give this to a kid. Yeah, but, you know, different stitches are useful for different things. I almost did a single crochet in here again. What's with me? Look, I did another one there. Uh, maybe I don't need to go faster. I just need to do this. Do this. <laughs> yeah, um, when I'm crocheting, I usually try not to watch something like too brain. I need to be sort of pay attention to what I'm doing by crocheting and um, watch the you know, So Queen's Gambit was like a bad example. Because <laughs> that shows, like, you know, they're, like, talking about chess positions, and I'm, like, trying to picture the board, figure out, like, what the heck they're talking about. But, I don't know, I've been watching a lot of Degrassi lately, which I don't know if anyone still cares about that show, but um, all of it is free on YouTube, like, officially by the official Degrassi people. I guess because I feel like for Canadian television, they, um, they're a lot less strict about, like, giving old shows away from for free. 
I've been, <laughs> I've been watching Degrassi because who doesn't love a little like high school drama and um, struggling with Karn? I'm always afraid I'm gonna snap these hooks because they're like you know they're wooden. Like I've I've had this cruddy metal hook in the past, so I don't have to be worried about like breaking it. <sighs> Yeah, but I'm always like crocheting and keeping one eye on the TV and it's always some ridiculous thing I'm watching. So I'm like, oh my God. And the gang member came into the high school to find da da da. Like it's always some ridiculous plot point. Like, oh my God, that girl died because he was texting and driving, except he was. I mean, that, that doesn't sound ridiculous by itself, but there's a lot of context that I'm not going to get into because this is not a Degrassi story. This is a crocheting story. I also, I don't know if anyone else does this, but um, you know how you have like go-to songs where it's like you know how they sound, so it's okay if you like, do work with them playing, um, because it's like a familiar sound. I do that sometimes with like uh, YouTube videos or like podcasts or like literally something with someone talking. So I have like let's play game, like let's plays of games on YouTube that I, like I'll go back and listen to again and again because like it's just ways to me at this point. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, sometimes I'll do that. Just I don't really have to pay attention. It's something like light and funny. I can. This end looks so ratty right now, and I'm really looking forward to this, like legitimizing it and making it look nice. Cause it's looking real. Like, look at how sad. Oh, I guess that part's not that bad. But this little hangy offy bit makes me. I'm gonna do that final stitch, and then I'll count again, and then I will look at the instructions. I believe we're on like row. We're on row three. That first weird like single crochet pattern one row. Two. God, this is hustling with this. Okay. Oh, I betrayed myself again. I had to do a double crochet. Okay. <laughs> At least I loosened it up with my hook. From the first time. All right. So another thing for free on YouTube uh, that you can watch is like a bunch of the I don't know if the Barbie TV show is on there, but like all of the Barbie movies are on YouTube for free. So if that's something you're interested in, they are there. Just don't procrastinate. Like you're. So one, two, four, five, six, seven, What is this extra? Okay. That explains why I didn't want to go in, because that stitch was... Let me do a whole count and see if that's really... That one's not supposed to be... It does look like it's wider, actually. I'm just going to assume. Like, look, you can see it. That the green ends right there, but I stuck this extra one on. So yay! I didn't have to do that one after all. And now this is all pulled out. Okay, well, whatever. It looks like I changed color for this third row, so I'm just going to... turn. By the way, um, I had to be on a plane this weekend, and um, while in security, um, they stopped me for a weird amount of time, and like I, I brought my crochet stuff with me, what I like to do by default, and they had such issue with my little tiny scissors. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what they thought I was planning to do with them, and I don't, if they weren't on the ban list, like I checked everything before I left, so like they were just really pissed that I had these very small scissors, and I was like. They're sewing scissors. They're in my pouch with my yarn, so you can really see. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> they were like, what are you planning to do? So, row four. Right, I have to change colors, so I might as well attach that before I look at the Yeah, The Princess and the Pauper has a surprisingly good soundtrack. For some reason, um, I didn't watch the movie first. I had, like, the chapter book for it. Like, you know how they sometimes make, like, um books after like tv shows or movies like i i read the book first from the library yeah i've done that with a weird amount of things like um for example like i'm not a fan of pokemon and i firmly believe that it's because i didn't experience it like at the right time in my life like i feel like there's certain types of media that like if you i'm moving on 
Um, if you experience it, like, as a kid, then it'll stick with you forever. And I didn't really do that with uh, Pokemon, so it's not really my thing, despite it theoretically seeming like I should really like Pokemon. Um, and <laughs> the way that I experienced it was through the chat. There were chapter book versions of, I think, the original show, like, with Ash and Misty and Brock. And so I would check out the little Pokemon chapter books from the library and read about it. Oh, also, um, I had these friends that every time I slept over, they would you watch the Pokemon movie with the um, two. I still don't remember exactly what was happening in that movie. It was weird. I'm going to read this. Chain one, single crochet in the first two. Feels like I've said single crochet. Right. I would also like a counter of how many times I've said the word crochet at all. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot of time. Okay. The first two. I really hate like going back into the same stitch that I'm currently in. <laughs> it's not it's not my favorite, but you know. But so I keep coming so close to calling crochet patterns um recipes because it feels like a recipe, you know? Like like it's the same feeling where I'm like, am I doing this right? doing it right and you just have to relax and follow the directions and it'll probably be fine um yeah but the i haven't watched any of the uh, barbie movies i think except for the princess and the pauper and i really liked that one it was really sweet i do also think it's funny that they have a joint wedding at the end <laughs> and I, I guess it makes sense because they like switched switched like didn't they switch people or whatever like the pauper marries the the guy that the princess was supposed to marry so well, there's for the the Barbie movie, <laughs> the Barbie Princess and the Popper movie. I want to know if she has any like. I feel like there's one where she goes to space, or like it's in the future or something. I would love to watch a sci-fi Barbie movie. That sounds so appealing. I want to do these first two. Skip three single crochet rows below. <laughs> okay, but the reason that I'm not confused by this is because we did mosaic stitch last time. So I kind of know what it means. So I'm going to skip three and then I'm assuming they want me to do it in this color down here. My thumb there and then I'm going to read the rest. Okay, I think they mean that they want to double treble. Next, single crochet. I've completely forgotten what a double treble is. So we're going to see if this book has it or I will Google it live on camera. Um. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like they'll have it. They have like they have the slip stitch. I'd be really surprised if they didn't have trouble. It looks like they don't. No, they have double crochet. There's trouble crochet. Think trouble. Why would they not have the? Okay, I'm gonna look this up, but it'll be okay. What life is sometimes. Especially since I'm like randomly picking stitches on camera. Okay, double trouble. The other problem is that um this is abbreviated, so it very well could be a stitch that I know. I'm just assuming the wrong one. I'll type in the abbreviation and see. I think this is U.S. notation. That's the other thing. Um. I think I talked about it last time, but there's different notation for different stitches across countries. So if this is a book from a different country, that will also... No, this is the US. Okay, good. Because there's a lot of UK notation that's, like, very confusing. <laughs> but this is okay. Okay. Okay, so you yarn over the hook three times. Whoa, I guess that's the triple part. Okay, three times. And then you insert the hook and stitch. So we're skipping these three according to the pattern, and then we're going into this, I guess? Down here? They didn't have me do the thing from the last mosaic stitch where I go into just one loop, so I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to go into. The next single crochet three rows below. So I guess I'm supposed to go directly through the single crochet. <laughs> You're seeing my brain fail live on camera. Okay, so down here, so I'm going into this. <laughs> Wait, it says three rows below. So in the original, because I'm on row four, so that must mean I have to go 
like into this into this green. That that makes sense because we're trying to link the green with the green. But won't that like scrunch it up? They didn't even tell me to chain anything. Yep, skip three. Three rows below a double tr okay, well <laughs> you asked for it, crochet book. Like one, two, three, one. Go down, so in there is what I'm assuming. Or no, that's on the third one. We have to skip that one too. Okay. I'm so nervous about this. Okay, wait. Let's count stitches. One, two, four, five, six. We have to go into the sixth one, so. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's especially hard because they're not like directly below, you know, it's like a little staggered because we're going, we went into every other space, but, um, see if I can get, oh, you know what? I can, I can do this. It'll be okay. Oh my God, this double, it's not triple by the way, it's double treble, like treble clef is okay. Yarn over, draw yarn through stitch. Okay, and then I'll have five loops on the hook, which is correct. I have five. Those are the three that I did, and then the one that I already had in this. And then I have to loop. Okay, so I have to draw through two remaining. Or, sorry, two. Draw through two. I'll be left with four. I need to stop talking so fast. I need to remember that I'm not, like, I'm on stream and I'm not just talking to you, so you can't be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now there are four loops. Okay, so I just have to do, like, get rid of loops by two. I think I can do that. Just like. There's something that had, like, two by two as, like, a thing. Like, that phrase is very familiar. Okay, so this is, oh, see, there's the first crisscross. Okay. I maybe understand what's happening here. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so I did what you asked under the second chain space in front of the fabric. Thanks for telling me this now, or I guess after the fact, but okay, single crochet into the next two double crochet. So, oh boy, this is going to be a doozy of a pattern because this is crossing over this now. So I'm like having a one, two, three. those are the ones we skipped. I went into this. One. So I have to do. Use? That's what I'm going with. Okay. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. So that's our first single crochet. It looks more like a straight line, honestly, because it's like down directly. But, um. I really don't know if this is going to work. But that's, you know what, the pattern people have to figure that out, not me. I am just doing what they ask me to. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. It's a much appreciated. Okay, single crochet in the next two, double crochet. Double treble again, our old favorite in the first. Skipped single crochet three rows below. Why do they word it so long? By the time I've got to the end of the sentence, I've already forgotten what they've asked me to do. Okay, but I have to do it into the skipped space down there like I remember where those are <laughs> um oh wait now I see it because you can see where the uh crochets are so like it's that space that we did after the four single crochets right in here you can see it it's like where the pink is not I'm just uh like <laughs> uh this is fun this is a fun time yeah so if you don't like having to figure things out and fly by the seat of your pants. Actually, everybody needs to learn how to like that. You, Cause if you can't, <laughs> that just means you need to relax probably, which is like, okay, we probably all need to relax, but you need to be able to just let yourself not know things. <laughs> okay, there we go. Here's another one. That looks way more crossed than this one, but it's fine. If it's lumpy, it's lumpy. Okay. I feel like I have to keep track of because their sentences are so long for this row. There's so much going on. Okay. 
under the first single crochet in the next four double crochet. Okay. Oh. What? Uh, okay. So I went into the one under this one. So I'm assuming I have to go here. Yeah. This sounds like a. Two. That makes sense though, because we're doing the patterns of twos and fours again, I think, like up here. Um, in terms of single crochets, I mean. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what it feels like. We have three single crochets. I'm gonna do one more. I'm sorry if I'm drifting, by the way. I'm still trying to get used to um centering myself so you can see what I'm doing. It's clear enough. I have a different camera set up now, so it's like way closer, and I also have this cloth that Lovely Claire supplied me, so <laughs> at least you can see everything. Okay, so I've done that. Okay, and then repeat. Cool, I don't want to do that, but we'll. Okay, so skip three single crochets, three rows below, and then do our double treble in the next. Okay, okay. It's fine. Okay, so we're skipping one, two, three. So does that mean we're going into this? In the next single crochet. What did I do last time? I'm very sorry everyone, I'm redoing this because I feel like I got a better understanding of what the heck I was doing last time. And I'd really like the chance to do this in a way that makes sense to me. So I wouldn't encourage unraveling things if you feel like you, you look at it and you're like, oh, I didn't do this perfectly, so I'm gonna be down myself and unravel it. But when you go forward and you under actually understand what you're doing, and so you want to go back and repeat something, I I feel like that's very um because then you can you know like you can actually count accurately, and counting is like super or okay. I determine whether I have my chain. I did have my chain one. Okay, so. Gonna chain one and then single crochet in the next two and then I'm who did what the heck they wanted for me. <sighs> and this will be fine. I think I'm guessing all we'll have time for is these because this pattern is robust. That's okay. Learning new. Hopefully, as the streams go on, I'll just start to collect like a very large bag of um all the things that I've made on here and we can. We can look at all of them one day, hopefully. So, this is where we go all the way down and we skip three single crochets. So, so if you look down here, there's three rows below. We're in this single. Skip one, two, three. It means we're going to this one. I knew something was wrong. And we're three rows below, so we want to be in the first row, right? Which was, which was our original color. So we literally want to be counting on green. Yeah, this is the row that we're, ooh. this is what we're on, right? So we have to skip one, two. So we're going into this one. Yeah, and you can see the loose part where I did it here instead. So I'm actually really glad we went back because it's like that would have been, like that would have been messed up. I don't know how to even get into this, but we'll figure it out. Oh, see, there we go. I really other mosaic crochet because it had me not go through both loops because, like, to give me a spare loop to go on. Um, but this one's just like, hey, Priyanka, stick your hook where sun don't shine, and by where the sun don't shine, I mean in the middle of this yarn. Um, and just just do it. It'll be okay. Trust me. Oh, that's so ugly. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really loose. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that nicer this time. Now that we figured out where where we're going. I also feel that it'll be more slanted because I don't know if you saw, but this that I took was way earlier than it was supposed to be, which means that you know it had less space to go. Like it was closer to where it would have landed at the bottom. So it wasn't as slanty. 
the ankle wasn't as sharp and that's bad because we're gonna do like a cool crisscross thing well the whole point of this very painful journey <laughs> so okay this is nice and tight ish on my hook so hopefully that'll look less terrible this Glad you guys are along for this journey. <laughs> yarn is amazing, and I I think I'm like a sucker whenever someone makes like a creature out of yarn or anything. Like, um, I don't know if you remember, but there was this like uh they were called voodoo dolls or whatever, but there were these like little keychains of like yarn men and they had like yarn balls for heads. <laughs> they were really cute. I think they were like a collector's thing, but I used to always see them in like edgy mall shops, like the van store. Or like a hot topic or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. This is the longest parentheses ever. Okay. Single crochet in the next two double crochet. This I can do. So we went we went into this one, right? So I'm gonna do this one. I can see a lot more clearly now. This is way better. <laughs> I'm really glad I went back. <laughs> or do they want me to single crochet like across the... No, right? No, they do. <laughs> okay, see this is why you need a picture in books because if you look at this, there's like a nice neat row across that whole thing. So I think I'm literally supposed to be like continuing where I left off. Okay, again, really glad that I went back. So, off like way. So I have to go into I know the amount of okays that I'm saying make it seem like it's not gonna be okay. <laughs> It'll be really good. And if I don't finish this on camera today, I'll just, um, I'll bring it next time that I'm on camera so I can show you, because I always go home and finish things up for my own ends, so I'll, I'll bring it back so you can see how cool it is. Okay, so, one, two. Double trouble again. The first thing rows below. In the first skip. Oh, this is where I'm doing the crisscross. I have to go backward. Okay, okay, okay. We have a plan. This is all coming together. They just wrote it like so confusingly. The problem is, this is such a weird pattern. I don't know. Oh, wait, look at how crisp that looks. I'm pretty proud of it. Okay, but what they meant was I have to go into the first like skipped one that I created. So, like, all the way back here, I'm crisscrossing back there, not forward. I don't know how I'm gonna get my hook down there is the problem because I have to like oh you can't see that let's see if I can show this look I'm gonna be like <laughs> I'm trying to enter from the bottom so oh boy <laughs> gonna, we're gonna do it it's gonna be okay I'm saying this more for my benefit than yours you're not you're not here <laughs> The problem is that this yarn is all getting mixed up into one, one strand of yarn, and I don't want that to happen because that's how you get splitting. Um, and I really don't want my strands to split because that's, I mean, you can mess up normally, but like when your yarn splits, that's super bad news. You just have a big hole. Or you have like spare little strands that aren't like full strands of yarn, so it's really bad. Okay, but I got it down there because I have all that previous experience. My last mosaic stitch also kind of hard to get, like the hook in, but you know, with a little practice, you can do whatever. Things always look intimidating, but if you just do them poorly once, the great thing with crochet is that you can unravel it immediately and take that again. Okay. Okay. Oh, look, that's totally an X. Look at that. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> yes. Sorry if I shouted like way too loud. Um, it looks like I haven't gone into the red range with this mic, so <laughs> we're doing good so far. So, da -da -da -da. And then I have to single crochet in the next four. Okay. 
that I can do. Now, see, now that I've gone back and I've figured out what the heck I'm doing, I can continue and I'll, like, I'll know what to do, basically. Because after this, like, as you can probably guess, after I repeat this, like, I think twice more, because there's, like, eight, you know, it's in rounds of eight and we did three rounds. So, I'll have a way easier time doing the other ones. I'll probably still look at the directions so I don't, you know, for reference, but, I mean... And as I get more distance from this X, I'll be able to see it better. I've done those four, oh, I've done those four crochets, but, and this is a little tight, so it's a little wrinkly, but, oh, but look, yay. Oh, oh my God, I was scared that my stitch marker fell down again. <laughs> okay, but yay, this is so cool. I'm excited about it. Thank you, Abby, for hyping me up <laughs> also. Um, because this feels cool. Okay. Okay, skip three. Yeah, okay. Three rows below. Okay. Okay. Skip three, skip single crochet three. Hate this. Oh! Oh man, I definitely missed this first one. I was supposed to get single crochet down there first so that I could get started and then continue. We're gonna continue even though I messed up because I don't want to like backtrack this close to the end of the stream, but I'm gonna do it properly this time. <laughs> um, but you have to single crochet three rows below and then... <sighs> These are such strange directions. That I feel that I can't be personally held accountable. <laughs> okay. So, apparently we're supposed to give it, like, a little anchor point to, like, get started down here. I, that looks really bad, but we're going to trust the process. Then we have to do our triple, not triple, sorry, excuse me, treble. I wonder if there's a base, like, a base crochet. That's a stupid joke. And it probably doesn't exist, but maybe it does. The next single crochet, three rows below. You want me to do it into the... Okay, I'm going to go into here. Flying by the seat of our pants. Plus the awesome part is, if I don't finish something on stream, that means that I can go home and do it and figure it out way better and then come back with like a really nice finished product. Like the mosaic stitch that I just showed you. Uh -uh. Crochet. The deceiving part is like, I feel like if you're talking to someone about this stitch, you can say like treble crochet, and if they don't know what you're talking about, they'll assume that you're saying triple. It's like such a lot. This looks horrible. I don't know why. <laughs> Look at it. I am I'm making an executive decision to not listen to that. I don't even care. I am going to figure out at home what the heck they mean, though, because it looks like... It looks really bad. I don't know why. Skip three. No crochet three rows. One, two. Here. Down here. Get my hook in. heck would I single crochet like uh do my treble is the problem next single crochet three rows below I know I said I wouldn't listen to it but I'm gonna try and listen to it <laughs> just like you you saw what that looked like right <laughs> I know it's my own design but like I don't I don't know what those designs supposed to be so I'm a little worried that I'll like mess up this seems like way too scrunched together and tight this way. Waffled back and forth too much. Ah, 
cross crisscrosses, they look pretty good. So, it doesn't turn out. The good thing about experimenting is if you mess something up, or like if you choose to not follow directions like me, whack, and if it turns out bad, you can see exactly what that part that you were questioning for was needed. Like you'll know exactly what that was for, <laughs> and you'll know not to question it next time. Which, by the way, sidebar, that's why I feel like um, children should be allowed to question um, figures of authority, especially if they're like people like me, where it's like, um, they don't understand necessarily why they have to do something, and if they don't believe in it, or they, they're not taught, like, the reason why, like, of course they're not going to want to follow it. Like, why would they follow something that they don't understand? That's critical thinking. You should, you should actually encourage that in your kids, I would like to think. Oh, hey, Papa. Welcome to the stream. Um, I am attempting to do this pattern successfully. <laughs> Okay, so I did two double crochets. Then double treble in the first skipped. Okay, so we're back to that. So I'm going to do my freaking treble one. And then I have to do in the first skipped thing. Where is that? I feel like it's right there, but that's like really soon. That concerns me. Hmm. Yeah, and this one ended up here. Okay, you know what? I see the dent here. Like, I see the issue that caused. We're backtracking yet again. I promised that I wouldn't, but I have a problem. And hopefully I'll learn to not do that as much through. But also, this is does not want to come out. It's very stiff. Okay. Okay. It'll be fine. Skip three, single crochet through below. Ugh. I don't know why they want me to single crochet three rows below. It's really bothering me. Okay. I'm going to go in here. Just single crochet. Um, but also, so this will also teach you a lesson because the way that I have learned, because I'm self-taught, right? I have learned in the past from um, like YouTube videos. So I'll see the person demoing it and then I'll do it, which is great to like start out, right? But at some point you need to learn notation and you need to be able to do patterns. The reason I originally checked out this book is because like I, I need to learn how to read patterns. And what you're seeing here <laughs> is why you shouldn't only stick to videos it's because you need to learn this stuff. Um, it's really important. Clearly, because I wouldn't be struggling as hard, obviously. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay. In the next single crochet, three Okay. I don't know why they said three rows below twice, but I assume that... I assume that I'm supposed to go in here. <laughs> so we're going in here. And I'm listening. On this time. God. I'm having the most like tangling and yarn splitting down there, but we're not going to talk about that and we're not gonna look at it. So it won't exist. Or maybe it will and won't be tangled at the same time, like sure. Not. Okay. Yeah, that looks so hard. <laughs> oh man. What? <laughs> what is this? I sincerely believe they're pranking me. Three single crochet, three rows below. What is this? <sighs> I legitimately don't. Maybe they want me to skip three and then single crochet and then three rows below. That would make more sense than zero, but like. It doesn't seem like that's what they want, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
is trying my patience. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on camera so that you can see what I'm, what I'm reading. I don't, this is that big. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm reading. I'm reading that, um, that row four one where it says chain one, single crochet in the first two. That's fine. But then it says skip three, single crochet three rows below. They want me to do that tiny single crochet three rows below, like where the original green is. I should talk about this as, but they want me to single crochet like all the way, oops, lighting. They want me to single crochet like all the way down here, which single crochets are really short. So that's, that's dumb. <laughs> and then they want me to do my double treble. So that really long sleepy one, they want me to do that like on in the next one down there under the skin chains in front of fabric <laughs> this this is complicated i picked a really bad one because it looked really pretty which i feel like i've done for so many things now okay i'm gonna zoom out and hope not mess up but up that's messed up. okay this seems where i was before yay okay I don't like this. Go we'll crochet three rows below. Yeah, skip three. One, two, three. Single crochet three be rows below. So that's one row. That's two. Oh, they want me to go down here? That's worse, though. This is worse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they want me to go down here with my single crochet. Are you sure? Are you sure that's what you want? Oh my god, wait. I understand what they were asking of me. I absolutely missed out this. I'm very sorry, everyone. They want me to skip three single crochets below. Which makes sense. <laughs> uh, we're gonna pretend that you guys didn't have to witness that. Okay, so we're on this one. So we have to go one, two, three, and we want to go into this one. Does does it say? The trouble. So I was right, and I. You guys have to learn from my like, my horrible mistakes in that don't doubt yourself so much. It'll probably literally be fine. Stop freaking out so much. Otherwise, you'll backtrack for no reason. <laughs> and you'll run out of time to finish this pattern. Let's see if we can zoom. I just need to freak, not freak out and like <laughs> do things. Okay. Oh yeah, you, you had to witness me like backtracking several times only to realize that I did it correctly in the first place. In my defense, I showed you the book and it's so confusingly worded like all the time. I don't know why they've done this really. It's, I noticed that it's a crochet trend where it's like, I think part of it's like the weird abbreviations. Um, I understand they like don't have that much space. It's a book of like 5 million different stitches so if they said everything like every single word they would you know they don't have time for that junk but at the same time <laughs> my personal opinion <laughs> i really would appreciate more clarity on things like this because i was that kid that like um i did really well in school but every time during a test i'd have like a million questions because i'd have questions about like the direction I never thought they were clear enough. Get like too nitpicky. But what do you mean by that? That it's too open to interpretation. I know that I can do well, but like <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Okay. I did my thing. Then I have to single crochet. And the next We're gonna focus and we're gonna get way more done. I might go a 
tiny bit over maybe see if I can get a good this but what we have time for into the first first skip so quick just skip single the first skipped single crochet goes below again i don't i don't understand why you would say it like that okay i'm gonna have to scrunch it up like i did last time get in there but i promise i'm going into the right thing probably <sighs> oh my god let me loops on here i feel like if you crocheted fast enough if you did a lot of friction and you had wood wooden like uh hooks like me you could like theoretically light it on fire right like that's that's a thing you could see okay so we have our crisscross again that i did last time but okay more water because i forgot it and now my throat's dying but that's okay we'll carry on first Single crochet in the next. Okay, yeah. So I was doing that before I started flipping out. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw out a mention for the library again because it's been like a while since I did it. But I got this book from the library, and the library has a lot of cool books on stuff. Um, my roommate got into chess lately, and they've been looking at chess books in the library. Um, they have just about every topic you could imagine. I recently got an auto repair book because I don't know what the heck is going on with cars ever and like I'd like to be able to maintain my own car or at least tell if it's like about to explode and kill me. <laughs> so, you know, check out books, figure out stuff for yourself. Um, libraries are free. It's a really nice read. Okay, and that's where we repeat where I started freaking out because I looked back at it and didn't make sense. Okay, so skip single crochet is three rows below and then double trouble next single crochet. So right, we're going the story started and then I have to skip one, two, three. We're skipping that and then we're going into the space. Oh. And make sure that this next single crochet through rows below under the second chain space fabric okay so we're going in here um that seems about right i'm gonna tighten my loops before i do this so I all floppy like that one that i did and my camera's having trouble focusing i'm like way too close i need to remember not to randomly zoom in next time because it messes up my whole <laughs> Like I had all my edges planned out and everything was focused and calibrated and nice. That's a little off though. It's gonna be really loose. Okay, that's fine. -ish. It's not great, but we'll continue forward because I want to get somewhere with this. I think I have to then go uh, the single crochet in the next two because we need to establish that like line in between the top of the X. I'll show you what I'm talking about after this is done. Maybe chugging along now. So what we did, those two um single crochets were the two in the middle of that X. Then we're gonna do another one of those boys. And I'm supposed to do it in like the last chain space. Is I wish if you had like a repetition, you would word um where you're supposed to go more clearly. Because in that, it says the first chain. But since I'm doing another round, it's not the first chain space. I think they mean this. If you look at it's the first chain space after two double curves. So it should be here. Okay. 
Excuse me while I angle darn. I I'm really glad that I kept my hubris in check when setting my um my little name card for the stream. And I kept it as local yarn enthusiast and not like yarn expert or something. Because I <laughs> I think I'm proven without like I've proven without a shadow of doubt that I'm not <laughs> I am not a yarn expert. Okay. Yeah, that's looking like something. Okay, and then you have to single crochet to the next bar. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll smooth this out and see if this X looks <laughs> Yeah, this this will look fine once it gets it gets reinforced by those. Okay, so this is turning out to look. I think that I may stop after this row because with like about time. And that seems like a good stop. I'm going to try and continue on at home because, um, and we can look at it again, but the pattern has like, I, I'm curious to see how these um, X's interlock because we, we've done one row and that's fine. Like the pattern is like, it's trippy. It's, I don't know how that happened. It makes sense though. If you just stagger them, I feel like, I feel like I understand what's happening with it. Oddly enough, <laughs> I am expertly enthusiastic. Thank you. If nothing else. <laughs> okay, this X happened. That's not my prettiest one, but it did happen. And then we're gonna do our trouble again, I believe. If I remember correctly, it was down and then you skip three. You're going one, two, then you go into this one. Get after it. Let me that. Was loose <laughs> if that. yeah that's the reason why i have like so many hobbies like i just tend to get very enthusiastic about whatever it is i'm exploring at that point which is like pre a pretty fun way to live honestly um as long as you like don't get weird about the fact that you've like abandoned hobbies it's important to be like kind to yourself in that regard because like we're not gonna like one thing our whole lives um so it's good to you know remember that we change as people that's you know that's fine you don't have to like the same thing forever i figure out where the because they want it in the ch in the skipped space which means it would go back here but that would make the x like way too big but we're just going to go with it. Or actually, let me let me talk about yarn for a second because we reached about the end. I might as well. Ugh, gloves off. Um, but so stow your stow way carefully. Otherwise, you'll poke yourself like a million times. Yeah. But I brought in two other kinds of yarn. I don't know if they're going to show up super well on the camera, but um, normally I use this kind, right? Um, it's like medium medium weight. And it's, you know, like it's the usual regular yarn that most people see, but I have some, this is called fingering yarn, and it looks like string, but it's like, um, so for reference, I think this is size, or like weight five or four or something, and this is weight like two. So, and this stuff is super soft, you can't feel it right now, but this stuff is typically used for like baby blankets and like socks and things that need to be like flexible and soft and, um, yeah, so I've been using it for a couple intricate little patterns. Like, I've been using it for, like, lace stuff, which technically the lace-type yarn is, like, one weight down. But if I'm not sure if this example will show up well on camera because it's white and the overhead lights are killer right now. But, um, oh, it is showing up. I started this little square. Um, there's this, like, skull pattern blanket that I've been doing in a different size. And so I tried um, just mimicking it at Ugh, mimicking it in the smaller size to see if I could do it and it turned out pretty well it's like really pretty <laughs> um 
yeah, and it was just an interesting exercise. Um, also, I know we talked about... I'll keep this... I know we talked about hook size last time, but you have to change your hook size um, with your yarn. So do you see how this one's like... This one's a 5 millimeter hook. It's pretty standard. And also the U.S. size, but... But yeah, so for reference, this is the normal like size for this yarn. For this yarn, I'll leave like a strand out so you can see. Here, wait, we'll do this really nicely. Okay, this is the yarn for this, right? This one is a little baby hook. Oh, this one's a little baby hook for this. Look at how small it is in comparison. Um, and this one's a size three, three metal. So this one's um five millimeters, this one's three. It's like really small. Um, and I do have even smaller on hand, but um, I don't tend to need them usually. But yeah, this one's really tiny. Baby hooks. But I think I showed them off last time too, but my biggest one is somewhere. The sky. Very big. <laughs> this one's a 10 millimeter. So yeah, it's it's fairly thick. Um, when you use that to thick your yarn, but I'm pretty sure that um this three millimeter is the smallest one that I have. Uh, so yeah, different hook sizes for different yarns. So remember, um, use stitch markers. Don't be afraid to like recount and yeah, just be patient with yourself if you're starting something. This goes for not just crochet, you know, for everything, but. It looks like it's about time for me to sign off, so um, I hope you guys have a nice night, and I hope this stream was relaxing for you. <laughs> um, bye, everyone.